I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, July the 31st, last day of the month. Brought to you in part by Bovitalize by Bimeda. Bovitalize is an oral nutritional supplement. Lower the risk of unintended interference that may negatively impact the effectiveness of injectable products being administered in the same area. You ever get to feeling your cattle are like pin cushions? For more information, go to buymedaus.com. Fat trim and punchy picks. Uh, your beef fresh 50s uh, were sharply higher uh, early this week. Uh, got up to $155 per hundredweight there. Uh, that is up in just such a short time of six from $60 in mid-May to $155. And you think, my gosh, and what are, what are your, your beef 50s? That's your fattest trim that you have. Uh, the trim that's taken off those obese, uh, big giant fat steers and heifers, and we know how big those carcasses are. And you think, my gosh, that stuff is plentiful. Why would the price on it be up so much? And this is helping packers uh, try to keep uh, on the, the right side of red ink there. Uh, and you think, my gosh, that doesn't make sense. There's more of it, so why is the price high? Well, I think the reason we're going to find that out is because we're always a little bit late finding out how much they've increased uh, the imports of beef. Not necessarily imports of cattle, but the imports of beef. Now, you get that imported beef uh, largely from Brazil, but from other countries like that. And that stuff is mainly brush-fed uh, they don't run their cattle through the system as fast as we do. So you're going to get some two, three, four-year-old steers in there. And they haven't had a bite of grain. Uh, they're just brush fed. Well, that is really lean meat coming over uh, in imported uh, boxes uh, to, in, into our system. Now, uh, note then, so then they take that, uh, that really lean meat there. They bring in those uh, those bundles of 50 trim, dump them in the hopper together, grind them up, and then that makes something that's pretty palatable and more like what our fleshy cows are, what, what our people are used to eating. And so there you go, your hamburgers to go into McDonald's and Wendy's and all those places and in your, uh, in your supermarkets, right, uh, places like that. So... Uh, you know, you can say that's good or bad. I mean, some people are totally against imports of any kind, but if we did, I guarantee you, if we didn't have uh, the lean imports of beef, uh, you wouldn't be able to afford to eat uh, hamburgers uh, every day at lunch as you're driving through the drive-thru, uh, and, and neither would most people. So uh, you can look at it in, in that, uh, that type of a, a reflection there, but uh, I think whenever we get the information back here for the most recent uh, month or two, we're going to see huge increases in the amount of imported beef uh, that we're getting from South America and places like that. But it's the last day of the month. We've got to have plenty of time to talk about our punchy pick of the month winners. And uh, we're going to start out with the Kids Corral, just like we always do. So check out these pictures from the Kids Corral. Third place is Peyton Shockley. Uh, he sent that in. It's nine-month-old Steel uh, checking his steers out there, and uh, and I think they're checking him out too. If you notice this picture, but I thought that was pretty cute there. Second place in the kids' corral is Jake Heidebrink, uh, and he's and Kaysen right there is on Old Biscuit, and this is in Piers, Minnesota, uh, and he went out to check the cattle there. And Old Biscuit taking good care of Case in there. And I thought that was a pretty cute picture that Jake sent in. And I'm glad we got that for second best in the Kids Corral. The best Kids Corral pick that I saw uh, was sent in by Dustin McIntosh. Now this is also Kaysen, but he's eight years old. He's a little bit older uh, than the Kaysen we saw from up in Minnesota. Uh, but if you look at Kaysen there, he is holding this calf for his grandpa to brand. And, uh, and they told me in that picture that you got to look under Kaysen there now. And he had just gotten kicked immediately before they took this picture 
of him holding that calf down for his grandpa. How hard did they kick old Kaysen? Uh, or maybe that calf's face was already a, a, a mess there. But uh, anyway, it kind of looks like uh, something's going on there. But I like that picture for the winner of the kids' corral from Dustin McIntosh. Now let's talk about the Punchy Pick of the Month contest. Now you know that this is the one, that the, the big uh, grand prize. You get all that cool stuff. Uh, if you see a, a punchy pick in your daily routine out doing chores or working cattle or whatever you're doing and you see something that looks punchy, snap a picture of it with your phone, uh, email it to punchy at nationalbeefwire.com and you're automatically entered to win uh, the punchy pick of the month contest. Now, I'm going to give you the top three. Third place in the punchy pick of the month contest is Jeff Furing, and he's from Hart, Michigan. Now, if you look at that, you think, oh, there's not Feeder Flash gang members in Michigan. The hell there aren't. Now, we got them there. So this cow went down in the chute. Uh, they could not get that cow out. They were trying to pull a calf out of this cow. The cow went down in the chute. Uh, they, all they could do was tip the chute over where they could get her close to the ground see what they could do. Uh, they tipped the chute over. Uh, they got the calf pulled. Uh, the cow and the calf were both good. She hopped up as soon as they got it pulled out and uh, took right off and everything was well, but uh, they had to get a little punchy to get that done up there in Michigan. How about the second place goes to Tyler Hyman and that's in Northeast Kansas up there. And I know they got punchy outfits up in there. Uh, they had a blind heifer. And I know it looks like this heifer is blind. If you notice, she, or it looks like she's hurting. She's actually just went blind with pink eye and they're trying to help her. So Tyler said they had to rope this heifer. Uh, they didn't know what to do with her once they got a rope. Uh, they had to load her uh, with the bail bed and you notice it didn't hurt her a bit. She's sitting there comfortably on the flatbed uh, wondering where she's at because she's, she's blind. Uh, then they just backed her up to the gooseneck there and pulled her off into the gooseneck to get her home so they could get to uh, doctor in her eyes and get her better. Uh, get her back to seeing and get her back turned out with her sisters there. But uh, that's a good second place punchy pick of the month. Now for the grand prize winner of the punchy pick of the month contest and first prize goes to Cole Hoskison. Now this is in Pecan Gap, Texas and I think this is one of the coolest punchy picks that we've ever had. This cow had foot rot. He'd been out there for three days trying to get her doctored. They could not get her. As soon as he'd get up close to her in that pond, of course that foot was hot and putting off heat and she didn't want to get out of that pond. So she'd run to the other side of the pond. He got tired of chasing her from the bank, uh, got his kayak out, got in there and got her roped. Uh, and Cole mentioned that, that immediately before roping uh, that cow and, and getting hold of her and where he could get her out, they had a bass jump in the kayak with him and he just about went out in the pond. But if you look at that small picture up there, you see him holding on to that bass that jumped in the kayak right before he roped that cow. But that's pretty punchy right there. Cole is going to get a giant box shipped to him and it is going to be slammed full of all kinds of swag from Beaver Feed Company in Beaver, Oklahoma. Uh, Beaver County Stockyards uh, in Beaver, Oklahoma, and they got some of the coolest stuff you've ever seen. Uh, we got some neat stuff from uh, Feeder Flash, neat stuff from National Beef Wire we're going to send him. And then, of course, he's going to get that whole case of Fair Piece, the revolutionary product that's scientifically proven. If he hasn't already used it, he's going to get to try that out and see how it works for him. But congratulations to Cole there. And thanks for everybody uh, sending in their punchy picks this last month, guys. Let's talk about your board. Uh, for Tuesday, August live cattle futures were up 72 cents. Got back some of what we lost there to open the week. But <clears throat> August ended the day's trading at 187.70. October was up 65 cents at 187.45. And your back months were steady or down two cents to up as much as 50 cents. So pretty good day in your live cattle pits there on Tuesday. August feeder cattle up 55 cents at 256.97. 
September was up 87 cents at 256.95. Look at that, just two cents per hundred different between August feeder cattle and September feeder cattle. Uh, your back months were kind of mixed uh, way out there. We had some lower months there. It was down 47 cents on the farthest out to up as much as, uh, as well, I got that wrong, so I don't know how much it was up there on your back months. But talk about your grains. How about December corn was down seven and a quarter cent a bushel at 405. November beans down 18 and a quarter cent at uh, 1021 and a quarter. September hard red winter wheat down three and a quarter cent at 550 and a quarter. Can't hardly read my writing here. Coming to you from Rockport, Texas. Uh, kind of in a hurry to get back out there and get to doing some fishing. Uh, decided to do a, a fishing trip all of a sudden here. Uh, the summer is going to get away if we don't get some things uh, done here. So I thought it was a good opportunity to do it the middle of this week. Uh, I just recently booked uh, two big racehorse sales in Rio Dosa, New Mexico uh, in, in, on two weekends in August. So not going to have a whole lot of time to be doing stuff like this. But uh, Let's talk about your fat cattle trade. I haven't had any trade to speak of. Uh, direct basis out of your five area feeding region. We did see Texas sell over 300 head at 188. Somebody got a little scared after the board was down on Monday and puked them two bucks lower. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't do anything to set the market. Uh, Iowa sold less than 100 head on Monday at 307. But for the most part, we haven't seen any trade break loose in the direct trade area out of the five air feeding region uh, but a market finder who happened in Yankton South Dakota on Tuesday just like it always does uh, Greg Reich and Stockman's livestock market in Yankton South Dakota had a good fat cattle sale they had 800 head in overnight 1300 in for the fat cattle auction there in Yankton South Dakota conventional just straight up fat steers and heifers sold from 190 to 196.75 that was steady to a buck lower. Uh, the program cattle didn't have a lot of drug-free, completely drug-free cattle. They weren't tested well, but the non-implanted cattle uh, sell from 194 to 199, and that was about a buck lower. Uh, Gary Marks that uh, puts this information together, he's a, he's a retired fat cattle buyer, still likes to go to the sale, and uh, he is doing us a great service here uh, by putting this information, sharing it with me so I can share it with you but he noted that there was a lot of plainer fed cattle at the sale uh, this Tuesday in Yankton and said most of them were bringing in the mid to high uh, 180s and they did have a, a major packer buyer there that was just lapping them up just as fast as he could but uh, but pretty good fat cattle auction there in Yankton South Dakota let's talk about your box beef cutout values they were down but uh, very lightly after being up pretty decent on Monday, but choice cuts on Tuesday afternoon were down 33 cents at 314.48. Your selects were down 14 cents at 301.38. Slaughter, uh, just for the first two days of the week, 238,000, exactly the same as last week at this time, uh, just 8,000 less than the same week a year ago. Talk about what else is going on performance livestock analytics tell you what I met I got a chance to meet co-founder Dustin Balsley uh, at a presentation I gave up in northeastern Iowa him and his father were there and I ate supper with him had a good visit he he developed this software uh, he had sold it for a while uh, to a big drug company got it back uh, and now is, is really pushing it guys he wants to help smaller cattle feeders with the, with this software and the information there uh, that you can you can manage and control so much easier with performance beef it helps you simplify your feeding your performance and your herd health there for more information and check it out it's as easy as your cell phone guys go to performance livestock analytics.com let's talk about your feeder cattle markets real-time index on dv auction Late in the day on Tuesday, sitting at 258.75, down 29 cents compared to the end of Monday's trade. Very, very close. And if you think the real time index isn't a good indicator of the CME Cash Feeder Cattle Index, latest CME Cash Feeder Cattle Index, 
258.73, two cents per hundred weight uh, away from your real real time index because things have kind of calmed down and it's finally caught up. But uh, pretty good indicator there. You need to watch that RTI guys. Let's talk about your big sales on Tuesday. And we really didn't have any real big sales. It's just that time and it's hot. And uh, Ozarks Regional Stockyard in West Plains, Missouri. It gets hot down there in South Central Missouri. That about 1,250 head through the ring is all. Another nearly 700 head uh, on their in-house video they do with help from DV Auction. And they have it every week, guys. It's amazing how many cattle in there, they're marketing right there, right off the farm, uh, but during their regular sale. But uh, uh, it was hot uh, and sultry in West Plains, Missouri on Tuesday. The reason they didn't have a lot of cattle there and the reason the demand wasn't great for those that were there. Uh, and it was also dry enough uh, for local producers to get in the hay field and, and start getting some hay rolled up there because it's been really wet down there this summer. But uh, for the sale through the ring there, feeders were steady to $4 lower. Calves were 3 to $6 lower. Now keep in mind, here today on Wednesday, and they always have their, their uh, slaughter cow and bull sale on Wednesday uh, with a few way, uh, you know, uh, pears and bread cows. But in conjunction with today's cow and bull sale, here today on Wednesday, they're having a special cow sale, which includes three large complete dispersals. You're going to have black, black baldy, and red cows there, and, and three big complete dispersals that are local there, guys. Check that out. Get on to dvauction.com if you can't make it down there. Call the sale barn ahead of time. Get approved. Get on there where you can bid on those if you want to buy some bread cows and pears, guys, and they'll be pretty nice. Let's talk about some other individual quotes that happened on Tuesday all over the country. How about Fredonia Livestock Auction there? My buddy Brad Hahn runs a good sale over there. 66 steers weight 793, almost 800 pounds and bring 266.50. That's a big time quote. How about my friends, the Anstein crew at Kingsville Livestock Auction, uh, just over in uh, western Missouri there, uh, just kind of south and, and uh, east a little ways from Kansas City. They still get some uh, people or families that used to take cattle to the Kansas City stockyards, but at Kingsville Livestock Auction on Tuesday, they sold 122 steers Weighed 801 and bring 261.75. How about up in the Northern Plains? Philip the Giant, Philip Livestock Auction, and and Philip South Dakota. Uh, they can they can sell a big steer up there. 54 head of them weighed 909 at 257.75. But the, the biggest quote that I saw anywhere on Tuesday come out of another DV Auction broadcaster. Lolly Brothers Livestock Market is your Macrosin, no BS, top quote for the day. They're in Macon, Missouri at Lolly Brothers Livestock Market. That's central Missouri. They can sell the fancy heifers there. That 81 feeder heifers uh, went to a Nebraska feedlot. They weighed 603 and bring 309.10 heifers weighing over six, guys. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.